Welcome to Home Dad Chat, brought to you by the National At Home Dad Network. My name is Brock. My name is Danny. We are here to talk about life as stay at home dad. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. No, I don't want much. I even love handmade crafts made of macaroni. Come on now, you should know me. Sometimes I might eat too much. No worry about my weight. Got the dad bod rocking on me. Sketches on my feet. Cargo shorts look good on me. I'm a dad, that's what I do. Hey everybody, welcome back to Home Dad Chat, where Danny and I are just uh, definitely feeling the uh, countdown to Home Dad Con, along with all of the other weight of the world and our families, just uh, keeping us real. And so, probably going to get a little real with you tonight, and then uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the speakers and who we're looking forward to uh, hearing from at Home Dad Con. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's been a very somber start to the uh, to the evening, but uh, we're we're gonna do our best, guys. So hopefully you enjoy this show. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, honestly, and if you're not, you're definitely gonna have to go on just to check it out because Danny and I, <laughs> without knowing it, we've we've gotten to know each other so well that we are matching tonight with our white shirts, our short hair, glasses, and you know just a bit <laughs> of that beard action going on. So. Uh, yeah, well done. Um, just so everybody knows, I'm going as Brock for Halloween. So this is my <laughs> my first my first attempt. You know what's really funny, Brock? Too is literally okay. So I came in here and I've been wearing this. This is like a little uh, like dry wicking undershirt, whatever. Is it from um, Costco? No. Okay, I, I was like, I've got the Costco, same kind so. of th- I've got the same kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, and so I was wearing my uh, um, my Gas Monkey Garage shirt, right? Oh first. yeah, yeah. You can't see it, but me. Yeah. Um, but I've been wearing that all day. And so I had this one underneath it just because I got up this morning and I'm like, I want to wear this little layer, but I thought, well, I'm going to put on the other one just to see whatever. And literally coming to sit down and take off the black one. Cause I'm just, it's gotten warmer and you know, okay. Just, I, I only need this little one. And so it wasn't uh, it wasn't planned, but it was definitely hilarious. It's like, it Oh, we're funny. twins. I know we got it going all the way. Even, you know, we got the white <laughs> earbuds in and everything. That's so. right. That's right. <laughs> oh, shoot dresses your co-host day on, uh, yeah you nailed it way to go chat. <laughs> <laughs> way to go for sure all right we're gonna pause for one moment here as i have a child running into the room again all right I'm just gonna pop. <laughs> nothing like having a run-in with a kid and their question is can i have a pickle <laughs> That kid is definitely from my loins. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're at that point too, it's like, it's bedtime. I don't care. You got yeah. anything but like sugar and caffeine, just eat it and go to sleep. I just, I'm done. <laughs> pretty much. Yep. Pretty much. That's, that's where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. So it's all good. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, it's been a, it's been an interesting this a week, this last week. And, you know, we're coming up on the final days of of getting to come to home dad con. Oh yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're in that home stretch. So there's a lot going on, lots of loose ends being dealt with and, and all kinds of stuff along with just family. And I think that a lot of guys, you know, you've got guys who see, see some of us going to home dad con and wondering how do they even get the ability to do this? Like, how does that work? Because it is a balancing act. It, 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 there is definitely that. But then on the other side of it, for the guys who have chosen to come, it's a whole nother like senior itis slash, you know, just preparation for for being gone for a time. I know I've heard guys say stuff like I make these lists for my wife and, you know, write all this stuff out for her yeah. so that they know what's going on. And, you know, all of these different grand plans for how things are going to go um, and I don't know. What's that like for you? Like you've been going for a while. Is that something you do with Marnie? Well, it is. It, first off, it's a partnership. It's a hundred percent. I agree. You, know, you, I you agree. cannot, you cannot do this unless your partner's with you and you both have to be convinced of how great this is. And fortunately for me, the first one I went to Marnie went with me. Um, she, and I've told the story before, but she stayed in the hotel and, and I went to the convention and had a great time and got to extrovert my brains out. <laughs> and she stayed in the room and, and like, just listened to audiobooks and knitted or knit. I'm sorry. I don't know what the 
past since those, but um, it was knitting all day. And then we'd get together like at the end of the day and I'd see, you know, kind of bring you some food or do you want to go out to dinner? And for two of the nights, it was, no, I'll just, just bring me some food and we'll just, I'm going to eat here. And then you go out and hang out with your, you know, your friends. It's fine. Um, so she, from that first one was kind of a part of it and immediately saw a difference in me. Where I was mean, your in, kids at during that time? Her mother came down from Minnesota and watched them. I, mean, I only had two at the time. Wait, I have two. Pretty sure I only had two at the time. Okay. Yeah. May have had three. Uh, time, man. So what was her reasoning for coming with you to that first one? Um, we didn't know anything about it. Okay. And we'd heard, just heard about it really within a, a, maybe a couple of months at most before we went. And, um, and she told me, you need to go to this. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll go to this. This looks like fun. It looks like you meet some guys and figure out what I'm supposed to do. How do I do this? But her thought and my thought too, was that she hasn't had a break either. Uh, and, yeah. you know, we've had however many years, like, I don't know, eight, 10 years that we've been, you know, married and what have you and together. And um, we just, I mean, we took a honeymoon, but we really didn't take any time after that. Yeah. And so she was like, well, would you mind if it was me at first, only me. And then as we talked about it more and more, and as it went along, she said, would you mind if I went with you and just stayed in the hotel? And I think, I think that was a great idea. I think it was just the, the best thing that she could do for herself at that point, because she got to spend all day just chilling out. Yeah. And not, you know, and at the time she was a police officer, uh, she was in the special victims unit and she absolutely needed some self-care. Dang. So, yeah. That would say so. Yeah. If you're, yeah. If you're in that yeah, place, she's, like she's pulling the, yeah, she's, she's a trooper. She's really she's a better person than I am by far. That's and cool. I don't think I'm a bad person. I just think she's really good. Yeah. But, um, I don't, and I don't, I, and I hear dads, I hear guys talk about, you know, Oh, my, my wife wants to come or the wife and the kids want to come. And I don't think that it's like a bad idea, but you have to have a very serious plan in place and it needs to be solid and unchangeable to where yes if your spouse and the kids are coming along and they're hanging out at the hotel like that you can still come and go as you please and not like put any bumps in the road for that experience to continue on because i feel like there's going to be a bad taste left in the mouth it's the bad you know, just experience if you're having to still be on duty or be on call. Yeah. That's going to stress you out. It, and yeah. I've seen guys do that. Mm -hmm. It's like when everybody talks about how, oh, it's, you know, great summer vacation, family vacation or whatever for, for the stay at home parent, that's just doing the same crap somewhere else. Plus sand, you know, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just, more difficult actually and i see so yeah. few times where at-home parents have gone on vacation and the at-home parent is like yeah it was amazing i got to relax i got to no no i just did exactly what i do every single day but at a hotel or right. you know whatever and, and that changes things i mean okay so i didn't have to cook as much or i didn't have to cook at all i didn't have to clean up those are great things but you're still the eagle eyes on the kid oh yeah you're still getting up at night you're still and this happens a lot on vacation what if somebody gets sick? Oh yeah. You know, what if they eat too much cotton candy and they're throwing up? Who's dealing with that? Yeah. And it's you. So yeah, I would, you know, I would caution anybody that to to not, you know, go ahead and try it. If it works for your family, I've sure. seen other families that do it and they did great as far as I could tell. Um, yeah. you know, I loved seeing, especially I've seen a couple of babies at home dad con and I was like, yo, hold your baby for 19 years. Let me hold it, you know. Um, but um <laughs> the, the still the enjoyment was there because they could get away. Yeah, you know, they show that time. Oh, well, I'm, I'm going to well, go to this thing. I'll be gone for eight hours, it, which is still a huge improvement for most of us. Sure. Oh, you know, yeah, they, definitely. Unless we're sleeping. And even then, it's not guaranteed. But right. Um, yeah. Well, and to like, I, if you're going to do like your family's coming along with you, like find out if there's other families that are thinking about it so that maybe mm -hmm. like the spouses and the kids can go hang out and do something. I know for like right. Orlando, yeah. there were families that did that. Um, that's a and, great example. And I, I, you know, for that kind of stuff, the different cities like that. I mean, Cincinnati for anybody that was going to do that, like, and I don't think that there are this year, but I mean, there's always like, you had like the, get the zoo and the aquarium and stuff here. Mm -hmm. So like, there was definitely like, I was keeping an eye out for it because I was like, all right, if anybody is going to basically bring their family, 
like this is a very family friendly city and there's plenty yeah. to do honestly there's a lot so, to do yeah and so i was just waiting and it doesn't seem like anybody is which is totally fine so mm-hmm. um but even if like a spouse came along there's still tons to do and see and and that kind of thing and just to feel i guess how comfortable they are going and doing things on their own like you were saying like Mm -hmm. marnie hung out in the hotel that would probably be very similar to what my wife would do (laughs) right in that situation and and imagine being an introvert and having the opportunity to just sit in a hotel room quietly by yourself all day long it's like yes this is the perfect vacation i'll be out here doing my thing you be here doing yours you know yeah, that would definitely be my wife. She's she's an introvert, and that would yeah, probably yeah. be like, oh, I can read a book and and knit and mm-hmm. binge watch a show or something. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. When yeah. do we leave? Yeah, but I mean, so yeah, so for the guys that are like, you know, are getting ready to plan. Honestly, like I, I would say that one piece of advice I would give any of the new guys who you know are getting ready to come in, definitely try to set your spouse up for success. So if they don't know certain routines, if they don't know where certain things are in the house, because that's always, that's been a thing too. Make sure that you take this time now, like prepping by writing stuff down. And it could be as simple as like, hey, like I understand that you might think you know where everything is or whatever, but like, let me just give you this list of what, I've been doing with the kids so that, and you can modify it however you want while I'm gone, but at least you have this. Because I remember specifically one of the guys stating that he got a text from his wife asking where the toilet paper was in the house one year. Whoops. (laughs) And I'm like, that's a pretty important piece of information. Yeah, Yeah, you should know that one. That's, that's, that's... yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just stuff like that. Set them up to succeed. Yeah. You know, give them because this is your spouse and you love them or you love them at some point, <laughs> you know, even if you're so frustrated, I just want to, but it really, you do <laughs> love them and you want them to succeed. You want them. Honestly, I go away. Um, half of the time I'm hoping that Marnie fails completely and it's awful. And she just, Oh my God, I can't believe how you do this every day. Cause it would be some, <laughs> an amount of vindication, you know, cause I'm just like, I try so hard and I don't get anything from it, you know? Um, <laughs> but, uh, but the other side of it though, is I really want to come back and she's like, man, we got everything done. The schedule was right on. Everything that you wrote down was right where it needed to be. Um, and I do that usually as, you know, I'll give like two years, three years ago, Minnesota, I think Minneapolis, I gave her a four page um, list of all the things because we had four kids in three different schools. We had religious education two nights a week. We had, we just had so many things going on, Yeah, you know? And I'm like, okay, this is everything. This is the times. This is the room numbers. This is where you're supposed to be. Um, Here are some pictures of the kids' teachers um, so that, you know, if you have to go into the school, this is the person you're looking for kind of thing. The soccer coaches were the same way. I had a picture of each kid with their soccer coach so that she could just hold it up and like, uh, I want this person, you know? But the other part of it, setting, setting her up to succeed, what I did probably that year was the first year, maybe it was before that, but I looked at her and I said, look, there's a ton of stuff on this and I do it every week. I set it up. I started it. I scheduled it. I know when it is. I've got all the reminders and alarms and everything else. And this is my, this is my job. Yeah. You're subbing for, <laughs> a, you know, a week, a couple of four or five days, three, four days, whatever. It yeah. Is. And anything could happen. And if I come back at the end of this time, and you have ordered pizza or Chinese food or something every single night, and the kids have, have missed their bedtimes, and there's, there's no clean clothes left. I mean, there's the place is just a mess. And you didn't make any of the soccer games or practices or anything else. Fine. Yep. Because you're taking care of the lion's share of this stuff for me, so that I can go and one, relax, two, be with my tribe and get recharged from that, and three, learn to do this job better. Yeah. And so if I come back and you, you know, you didn't get it all done, I'm not going to blink an eye. I may joke yeah. about it later, you know, because that's the kind of person I am. Make sure um, you buy her a bottle, of, a bottle of wine or a good yeah. beer before you do it. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and sit with her and say, you know, no, let's, let's talk about the laundry for a second and, you know, and just make a joke of it. Sure. But go, go into it with the understanding that short of, you know, medical things or something like that, all of this other stuff can miss even yeah. school, 
you know, you miss a day or two of school. Oh, we really needed to get there, but we'll be fine. Yeah. You know, you're looking at one or two or three days out of a, I don't know how many days we spend in school as children into adulthood. You'll be all right. I know. I know my wife would not miss dropping the kids off at school because then she has no kids at the house. So <laughs> I'm not worried about not that. Not gonna one. miss drop off at all. <laughs> no, not gonna miss drop off at all. Not not for sure. Now pick up is another thing, but that's mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I kind of want to miss pick up every day too. So mm-hmm. but they, they always have your phone number. It's like what? I know, right? They How always know to track you, you down. <laughs> so, Mr. Yeah. Mr. We know these are your children. <laughs> sure. <laughs> You get a DNA test to prove that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I mean, so coming up to the convention, you know, guys are coming in, you know, early. I mean, honestly, there are so many guys who are just excited for this. We've got mm-hmm. over, I'm pretty sure we're over a hundred attendees right now, uh, which nice. is pretty exciting. That is. Um, and some of our attendees are also speakers. So that kind of plays a factor in those numbers. Um, but I think in all, we're right at like, I think we're right at around a hundred uh, in person like attendees, uh, plus then speakers. Awesome. And so we've got a few virtual presenters this year, um, just mm-hmm. because of COVID and and everything. Um, you know, people trying to keep themselves safe, especially yeah. uh, one speaker who's pregnant. <laughs> so totally makes sense. Yep. Um, but yeah, Thank I mean, you for sharing, but definitely take care of that baby <laughs> yes exactly exactly and that, and so you know we've for anybody who hasn't seen this or not but there's like there's a group of us coming in early we're going to go do a bourbon tour on wednesday uh so that's going to be a lot of fun and we've talked we talked about that a little bit uh prior um thursday when everybody comes in um we're going to have a photo walk which is also a brewery tour uh, at Sam Adams tap room, which is going to be awesome. Uh, and then there's another group going to the Dayton air force museum, which mm-hmm. honestly, like, I mean, I wish I could be in two places at once. Right. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough call there. Where's my time spinner from Hermione. Uh, Green. <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally pull that one off there. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. And then that night uh, is the kickoff of everything. So you know, we're going to be at Molly Malone's, which is an awesome Irish pub. That's only a couple blocks from the hotel. Uh, that night also too, there's a live Facebook event going on where Shannon Carpenter and Jonathan Heisey Grove are going to be on, um, being interviewed for, yeah. uh, Shannon's book. So, um, I'll put a link in the, in the description for that. So if anybody wants to check that out, I think it's at like eight o'clock Eastern time on that Thursday night. Um, so that'll be, that'll be really exciting. Kind of a nice little kickoff as well. Yeah, well um, I actually, and, just to kind of go back just a little bit on Monday of that week, I'm actually going to be on local television talking about the convention. So I, I got set up with that. Sweet. Pretty exciting. Yeah. 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 Make <laughs> us look good, man. Yeah. I'm hoping that the shirts are here by then so I can wear one. <laughs> oh, nice. That'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. So just in case anybody doesn't know, Jonathan Heisey Grove is our president yes. of the organization. He is better um, known as JHG. <laughs> JHG, yeah. And the guy is a graphic master, in my opinion. Yeah. Pretty good photographer from what I've seen, but definitely the guy that can just put together graphics. And, you know, what do I know about it? I got ham hands. I can't even draw stick figures, but seeing the stuff that he does. He did, he did this graphic. Yeah. For Home Dad Chat. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah I like it one. too. I love the, uh, I love the coffee mug. Yeah. For anybody. Yeah. Even though Not we don't drink coffee on this show ever. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Put stuff in a mug. It doesn't have to be coffee. That would be the worst effect ever. <laughs> be like, let's drink some coffee at eight o'clock at night. Oh my goodness. <laughs> See, by eight o'clock, I'm, you no, know, it's probably about four o'clock. I'm deciding is it where I'm at? Is it the rest of my day? Is it alcohol or caffeine? Where I'm at? Ah, you know, yeah. mentally, what am I going to do? Am I, am I ready to just throw in the towel? Well, I might have to get a, something to drink, some rum or whatever, yeah. <laughs> whatever it is, or, you know, I'm just going to need to keep powering through. I'm going to have to get a cup of coffee. So, yeah. but you know, I can go to sleep after a cup of coffee. Really? I sleep fine. Yeah. Nice. I mean, I can, I usually, I, that's something that I can do for like an afternoon, like power nap. Like I could definitely drink a cup of coffee, take a nap and wake up and be ready to go well did you know that drinking a cup of coffee and taking a nap actually has a better effect than just 
a cup of coffee? Yes, I did. It takes time. Okay. So that's yeah. why, is that why yeah. I don't know if that's why that's you one of the it. reasons. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, even, I'll do even sometimes in the morning too, like after I drop the kids off and I come home and get breakfast and before I get going, like if I'm mm-hmm. like, I just need to close my eyes for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the, that's just part of the job. Yeah. You know, cause you've got to sleep. I mean, like when, when they're, when they're infants, it's you always sleep when the baby's sleeping period, unless you're driving, don't do that. But if, <laughs> if, because that's how you have to figure out your schedule you have to match yeah. their schedules. You're up every two or three hours at night. Well, when they take a nap during the day, you have to do whatever you can to get a nap. And take a short nap to, so that you can continue right? working. Yeah. <laughs> Keep alive. Yeah. That sleep deprivation, man, is the worst. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's, so that's kind of how that flies. Um, mm-hmm. So then Friday morning, we're going to be in the city view room. So we're going to be in two different conference rooms this year. It's a little bit different than past years. We had a, a bit of an, a situation take place with uh, conference rooms and how all that happened. So we're going to be in the city view room for Friday, which is awesome because like it, it's a, a room with windows that looks out over the Ohio river and over into mm-hmm. Cincinnati. Um, there's actually like a patio off to the side that you can walk outside for. Um, so it's going to, it's just going to be a really neat little setup that we we're going to have there. Um, but we've got uh, Ben Killoy kicking things off. I'm excited to hear his conversation. Um, just, you know, he's been a big proponent for just dads in general and, his podcast that he's been doing for military dads has been pretty exciting. Um, mm-hmm. And so just to get a hit, hear him come and talk is going to be great. I heard him and uh, dad too, um, a couple of years, well, for, I think it was DC. And I was just blown away by his, uh, his ability to tell a story. Mm-hmm. So it'll be, it'll be really cool. He's, I mean, he's doing the, who do you see in the mirror basically. So, and at, which I think that a lot of us can, uh, <laughs> can definitely, you know, how do we see ourselves in the mirror on a regular basis? Cause sometimes I see myself as a great dad and sometimes I see myself as a puddle of mud. So, yeah, you know, I mean, and they're both still true. Sure. Yeah. I mean, but it's, how do you maneuver through them? And I I'm hoping, you know, that's the thing I'm hoping that he talks about that. Yeah. So, I mean, he's, yeah. he's a former Marine, so I'm sure he's had to pick him up by the bootstraps and figure it out. So I'm, that's, I'm he- looking forward to hearing it. He, you hear that a lot too in, in the things that he talks about in his writing and stuff like that. And he talks about adapting, you know, yeah. and adapt and overcome is a part of, you know, the Marine philosophy, of course. And that ad- adaptation is really a big part of going, especially from, uh, from a soldier, you know, yeah. full time to going to an at home dad. I mean, I'm sure there are greater things that there would be a greater disparity between the two that you could find. But realistically, I am, you know, uh, what do they call a life taker and a heartbreaker over here. And then now, Oh no, I've got to, to come in and take care of my children and I've got to provide for them emotionally. Yeah. I've got to provide for them mentally, Yep, you know, and all of that is such a huge difference. And I've listened to his stuff uh, off and on, you know, there's a lot of podcasts that I try to listen to. So I try to pick up a little bit of everything, but he's really got a lot of, uh, or, or not, uh, he's got a different view of, all of it coming in and you can see if you listen like from a while back when he started and then to now how much he has adapted oh yeah you know and how much he has accepted which you've told this story i believe before yeah accepted you're an at-home dad now yeah you know and that moment of when you look in the mirror and go huh that's a dad yep and then that's a full-time stay-at-home dad and being able to look in the mirror and figure that out. And I don't know if that's where he's going to go with it. But that's was my first thought is looking at who you are and like, huh, I'm not who I was and that's okay. Yeah. Now I have to figure out how to adapt myself to take on this role. So I'm kind of excited about his, I hope I get to, yeah. uh, to, I, to hear his whole, his whole. Uh, I have a feeling too, like I'm hoping that he's going to go at it from like what the dad to kind of situation was in DC, which basically talked about like kind of, not like reinventing yourself so much, but mm-hmm. you know, who, like, who are you outside of being a dad? Like, you, you know, you're, you're a guy, what are your, what are your things that you like to do? What, what's, what is it that makes you tick kind of deal? Mm-hmm. Because dad's only like one f- fashion of it or facet of it all. Like there's, there's so many other things that make up who you are. And yes. it shouldn't just revolve around just being a dad. Like, yes, because if you're, if you're just on that, like, you're missing out on a lot of different things. And that's the one thing, like, especially from like an, a, um, 
like a social media influencer standpoint, which was mm-hmm. kind of the conversation piece is the whole idea of like a lot of us have like, you know, blah, 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 dad type of thing, like attached to our names. And it was like, well, you know, could you change that name to be something else that would actually grab a broader spectrum of people than just dads? And so mm-hmm. that was what we were, a lot of us were challenged to do. And I'm kind of hoping he goes into that a little bit as, as well, as far as like, you know, as a stay at home dad, like what other things do you bring to the table besides just, you know, I'm a dad that's home with the kids kind of deal. Cause there is so yeah. many other things to do. Yeah. And there's so much to, to each person. I mean, every member of the organization and we yeah. looked at it, we talked to a lot of the guys since we started the podcast, even that there's so much more. There's so much. I mean, you look at, talk to some of these guys, the guys that I've talked to that, you know, about for interviewing to get on the podcast. And we still got a lot of guys that were still waiting yeah. to put into the schedule and stuff. And it's just like, you did what? what that's amazing you know yeah. and, and whatever it might yeah i drive a minivan so that i can carry all of my uh camera equipment because i film for um who does it motor trend or car and driver oh, i film yeah. for car and driver so i've actually had it to where i've had the side door open and i'm hanging out taking shots i'm like what this is amazing you know but a part of that too is the, for one of the things that i first thought of is because right now uh, I'm very frustrated. I'm I'm really just just tired, and I'm ready for home dad con so that I can get a break. I just need a break so badly, and that is just part of the job, right? You get to that point, you know what you need. Yeah. But the part of it that I was thinking of for what he's talking about, and we're looking at you know who we are and the many facets of who we are. I'm still a husband. Yeah. And honestly, for me and my wife, I'm still a boyfriend too. Um, I'm yeah. still, you know, courting my wife. I, I hopefully will always have the brains to do that for my situation because I married so far up, you know, if she ever figures it out, I'm in trouble. Never you know? stop dating so, your spouse. That's right. Like, that's exactly. Never exactly. stop dating your spouse. Yep. And because, it's such a big part beyond, oh, I'm yeah. a dad. Yeah, you are. And kudos, keep doing it, get involved, do all that stuff. You know, even if you're not full time at home, whatever, get involved and be that dad. Yeah but don't get lost in it. Don't let it overwhelm you, Mm -hmm. you know? Definitely. So, yeah, so so I'm looking forward to hearing his talk. And then we've got uh, some breakout sessions. One second before we move forward. So just for, I just want to make sure I have this in my head. So you you said we have two uh, conference rooms that we're in. We do. Okay, so, but for the opening presentation, we're all in the same one. And then we'll use the other one later is what you meant, right? So we're in one conference room for one day. Right. It actually splits into three And then rooms. another one is the other. And okay. then the All other right. one is on Saturday. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. I wanted to make sure that we weren't somehow like, well, you guys get to sit in the city view room and we're going to sit over here in the, I'm looking at a trash can room and we get yeah. a virtual or something like that. Or it was like, <laughs> no, split no, in the no, nothing like barely... that. Okay. So we're all going to be in the same room. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. Um, one day again, we'll be further yeah. away from the bar and then on another day we'll be closer, <laughs> closer to, the bar, to the bar. Okay. Like, <laughs> does that make you feel better? <laughs> that does. That does. And there will be coffee and I will be fine. Everything will be good. So anyway, but anyway, the, the, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I wanted to clarify nope, that. So the second one was yeah. So breakouts. Yes. Yeah, so we got breakouts, uh, from, uh, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, building a more, Gender Equality World uh, Starts at Home with Brian Anderson from Fathering Together. Um, Mm -hmm. So he's going to be there, which I'm excited to have Fathering Together at the convention this year. Um, They are a mega force um, in what they've been doing. It's crazy. They've only been around for a few years, but man, they are just, it's just a nonprofit that's just blown up in so many ways. Mm -hmm. Um, And they've got, um, you know, they've got an amazing leadership team that's, that's, got a really good plan in place for how they're doing it so and actually too uh so david stanley is actually a part of fathering together as well so we've actually got two guys yeah david's a part of their board um and brian's actually one of the co-founders along with uh, christopher lewis who's also a co-founder as well so yeah and if nobody's heard david stanley's name yet if maybe this is your first episode or something because there's no way you didn't hear it up now but he's uh one of the presenters too on one of the other breakout sessions and he is He's a writer, isn't he? I don't know if he's, has he had a, he's a has he been yeah, published? He's, he's, yeah, he's an author. He's a sonnet writer. Um, That's it, sonnets. He's a, he's a I, former state, he's he, he's an OG stay-at-home dad. Um, yeah. I listened so, to his sonnets on TikTok. And um, yeah, yeah. Because I pulled it up just to see what was going on because I didn't know he was doing sonnets and my wife and I are big, you know, literature idiots. So um, I'm just sitting there going, oh, that's cool. 
and my <laughs> wife, the one with the, the education and intelligence, going, oh, that was that was pretty good. Yeah. So. But looking forward to uh, hearing from him and cool that they're on that he's on the board as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so they're going to be there. <clears throat> I'm interested to hear what he's going to say. It's, uh, I mean, gender equality, of course, is a conversation that's been going on for a while. So it's definitely yeah. beefed up over the past few years. So I got that um, mental health session breakout will be at that time as well. So you and Lauren, I'll be in there. Mm -hmm. And then um, Joel Willis is coming from uh, the dad to talk about leveling up parenting through gaming. So he's actually going to be uh, discussing like video gaming with your kids. Um, and also along with that too, like, so he actually, he wanted to get um, everybody involved that uh, whether it be someone who is, uh, whether, whether it be somebody who's coming to the convention or somebody who's not getting the ability to come to the convention, he wanted the ability to um, actually try to bring as many people in together for video gaming. And so he actually set up a virtual gaming event um, that I'm going to post a link to. But basically, um, it's going to be Monday. So Monday, October 4th, from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern, he's going to host a fortnight uh, gaming session. And, uh, so he'll have some different things set up for that. And then Tuesday night, October 5th, he's going to do a Mario Kart deluxe, uh, uh <laughs> the tournament from nine to 11, uh, for that as well. So I'll, I'll post up what's going to happen with that and how that's going to work exactly. Um, he's like, in order to participate, uh, you must have a Nintendo switch, um, and Mario eight or Mario online account for that. So, um, but yeah, I'll get that all posted, but yeah, I got to hang out with him and have, have lunch with him a few weeks ago. And he was just like, man, like, he's like, would you think it'd be cool to do like a gaming set? I'm like, yeah, totally. Like I, I don't have any of those systems. So like, I'm not going to be able to participate, but I would guarantee there are plenty of guys who do. So that'll be a lot of fun for, for those guys to get involved in. Um, I'm telling my wife that uh, for the convention, I'm going to have to get a switch. <laughs> you know, and, and what's really funny is I, I don't really want one. I'm not really good with consoles and I'm not good with buttons anymore. I, I'm a mouse and keyboard kind of guy and I'm slow and I would just get just destroyed in all these games. I just would, but I would still have fun. But uh, have you played Mario Kart? Ever? I haven't played Mario Kart since the Wii came out. All right. So, um, you know, it's a true family bonding game, right? Oh, yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah I love Mario so the, Kart. I'm, the entire I mean, point of it is to blow people up right before the finish line. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Send, so, that, send that turtle shell. <laughs> teach your kids. <laughs> look at you. You're winning. You go, boom. Look at that. You're behind. I guess dad wins again. See, when I got married, that was when the Wii came out. And so, yeah. like, we bought it. And my wife and I, we played games all the time like you know this is way before kids so it's just us two in the apartment with our mm -hmm. dog and uh mm -hmm. man i it, it was so much fun or i'd stay up and i would play i had the uh link crossbow uh game on there and so i would play that for hours nice um but yeah so i i, I definitely love video games i still have the wii i actually got a super nes that still works that's from my childhood it's not the it's not the retro version that they came yeah. out that tiny little thing like it's actual like the from the 90s super nes and it's got i've got um i don't have mario kart for that i need to go find that but i've got all the mario games for it so i've got super mario yeah yeah like and all that kind of stuff cool um, yeah so that'll be fun uh and i think he's going to even have a um setup for being able to actually play video games there as well um so i think one of the things there, if you if you have a switch bring it with you because i think he's wanting to get a bunch of guys together to play um mario kart with it so that was the other thing that he's working on um so our cool. keynote so our keynote speaker for that afternoon is going to be uh kimberly wolf kimberly won't be there in person uh this year um she's going to present vir virtually on technology and adolescence uh, what to know and what to say last year she uh came to dadcon at home and presented on i think it was something with like talking to your teenage daughter something along those lines i can't remember it sounds exactly. familiar um, yeah because her name is very familiar too yeah but. she she was she was a part of dadcon at home last year she was really looking forward to being in person this year 
Um, that's not going to happen, but, um, I'm excited that she's still going to be able to present and, uh, mm-hmm. I'm excited to hear it because technology is something that all of us and our kids are involved in. And so to have yeah. a better grasp of what they are seeing versus what we are seeing is super beneficial to your parenting tools. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I love too, that kind of goes hand in hand with, um, um, Joel's Joel Willis's, uh, presentation about leveling up through gaming, right? Because after, especially after COVID, a year, let's say, of being at home and everything being virtual, you know, yeah. and our kids, depending on their age, of course, having, not really having, but getting, I guess, the opportunity to learn everything about technology, you know, the amount of laptops or Chromebooks or whatever that went into people's homes right. and the amount of technology, we just jump started all of that. And I'm very concerned about it, but I've been online for I don't know, forever. And so I'm aware of, you know, what is and what is not and how to safeguard them. And we've talked in the past too. And Home Dad Con had a sponsorship, I believe, from Bark, which we is did. an amazing yep. security system uh, yep. for your, your, your devices. I love it. Um, but the reality of where we are right now, learning to play video games with your kid, even if you don't like video games, yeah. is something you may want to think about. And we've talked about it like with uh, Space Jam 2, um, mm-hmm. we've mentioned it other times about other things yeah. and I am all for sports and outdoor activities. I'm not good at them and I never did them growing up, but I want to go, yeah, let's go kick the ball around. Let's go throw, you know, play catch, whatever it is, because that activity is so much fun. The team building is so much fun and everything that you do and the reality that now you can get a lot of those same benefits in front of a screen. Yeah. You know, you still need the physical activity. But the screen isn't the the you know TV rotting your mind that it used to be, and if it ever was, I don't know. But the both of these going hand in hand with understanding what exactly technology is doing in our lives as dads. Sure. You know, yeah. I love both of those. I, I I wish I could hit them both. I'm gonna yeah be busy well, during uh, Joel's, but it's all good. I mean, we're also gonna be trying to record a lot of these as well. So if you're good, if you if you've uh, if you're a member. So like, that's the other thing too. So, you know, we've got those who are coming who are already have their members membership fee built into their ticket. And then, um, there's also the ability, um, which I will, we need to get this posted out, but basically the ability to just purchase a membership to be a member for a year for the organ with the organization. And then that will bring you in to be able to also get to see some of this content that we'll have set up. We're we're not sure exactly how much we're going to be putting out and and that kind of thing, but um, it's definitely worth becoming a member uh, for that along with the fact that you're helping the organization with just day-to-day operations, honestly. And so, um, yeah, there's a spot actually on the website where you can become a member um, and that's one of those deals where it's like, I kind of want to go like straight into like NPR <laughs> like yeah, yeah. mode. What's our goal for this podcast tonight? Yeah, exactly. Like how many can we get? Um, but yeah, so that's, so that's going to be a, a really good just Friday. And then we'll end the Friday, um, with another breakout session, uh, where we've got road tripping with your kids, uh, David McMillan, one of the local guys here in town that I've talked about quite a bit. Good friend yeah, yeah. of mine. Um, he's going to be there, uh, with his camper in his car, um, talking about just how he functions with road trips and giving you guys, giving everybody some good advice on how to make that happen and be successful at it. He's been all over the country, um, with the kids. So that's going to be cool. Uh, there's a panel during that time that I'm going to be moderating. Um, and so that's going to be on, uh, your sexual health and relationship answers. So Emma Schmidt, or as actually she is now, Dr. Emma Schmidt. Uh, nice. congrats, congratulations, Emma, to that. She just actually uh, got her uh, doctor just recently. Uh, she will have a few of her colleagues with her, and they are going to be answering questions. Actually, if you are attending or if you hear this and you have a question like about this, like send it in. Um, we won't use your name um, to get the answer, but definitely if you have a question, um, send it to us because I would be happy to make that part of the part of the panel, uh, question and answer session. Um, and that's something that you can also do in the, uh, the group 
portion of things as well. So that's, that's going to be a really exciting panel. I'm really happy that she was able to make it. Um, Emma actually had to back out last year from dad caught at home because she caught COVID. Yeah. Um, and it, it, uh, it was before the vaccine. So, um, oh. yeah, it, it was, uh, she, she had a rough go. Um, so I'm really happy that she's able to be back and, and she's healthy and, and things are good there. Um, and then, Dr. Robert Frank, who is basically what I would consider the godfather of home dad con. Mm -hmm. uh, he is going to be here this year and he's going to be talking about the power of parenting and what we need to know for raising successful children. Um, hey, who doesn't want a successful kid, right? <laughs> or or, right. Be, or feel successful as a parent in raising your children, I guess is another way to put it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so he'll be here and uh, I'm excited to get to meet him. Uh, he's definitely one of the, you know, he is the reason that we even have this convention. So, um, that's, so that's the last panel or set of breakouts. And then for Friday for the finishing up of things, uh, we are going to have something that we haven't had before because this is the 25th anniversary and we're going to have a panel of former presidents actually, um, spanning over the 25 years. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, we have, let's see here, I'm going to pull this up. So Dr. Robert Frank is on this panel. Uh, Mike Stillwell is on this panel. He's a former president. Um, Austin Dowd, uh, who a lot of people know, is a former okay. president. Uh, Chris Routley uh, is also a former president, will be on the panel. And uh, hopefully uh, him and his family will get through this uh, COVID battle that they're going through right now and everything will be good yeah. for them. He said he was feeling better. Good. I'm glad but I'm still that. worried. I'm still I, worried. I hear you, man. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm, no, Mr. President, please get better. Yeah, get better. <laughs> uh, Al Watts will be there. And uh, Al was the president from uh, 2011 to 2015. And then uh, our current president, Jonathan Isaac Grove, JHG, will also be in attendance as well. And he will be moderating, I believe, or maybe even on the panel. We're not still working on that one. But uh, yeah, so that'll be the end of Friday and uh, it'll be an exciting first day. And then we're going to do a group picture on Friday night. We're going to switch it up a little bit because, uh, because of the two different rooms and where we would like to do the group picture for usually what would be on Saturday. We can't do that on Saturday because there's a, a wedding uh, reception actually in there. So we're going to take care of it on Friday People night. People getting married when we want to take a picture. I know. Which is fine because honestly, like there are some speakers who are not going to be around on Saturday that are presenting on Friday. So it'll be nice mm. to have them uh, still around to be able to take pictures because I That'll believe be good. most of the people that are going to be there on Saturday will be there Friday night. So that way we can get the group of people that we want. That works out better. Yeah, it'll be it'll be a nice uh, kind of go with things. Um, we won't get into Saturday just yet. We'll we'll leave it for next week because. Uh, Sure, we're, sure. We're we're running up against uh running up against the wall at the moment. But well, I think I want to yeah. say real quick about the picture. Yeah. Every year, guys, what we do is we get everybody together and take a picture of everybody. I mean, every single person, and you get your picture taken with yes. all of these other dads. You will want to be in that picture. It's fun. you do it really, and and you look back on it. I mean, I see pictures from years ago, and I'm like, oh, there I am. Oh, there's so and so, and there's so and so, and I start picking everybody out, and you know what shirts we were wearing, and whatever. It's just it's like it's like looking back to your graduating class or something, you know, yes, where you look at oh, yeah, that's my that's my high school graduation, and there's oh, there's Bobby so and so. We used to. <laughs> you know, go mud and back in the fields or whatever. Um, and the guys that you meet and, and the tribe that you form when you're there, they yeah. will all be in that picture. So do your best to get into that Friday night. That's, Definitely. that's going to be absolutely a memory worth having. And, uh, and, and to like, when we finish up before the picture, there's happy hour. So you'd be able to get stuff at the bar beforehand. And then we're doing a Whoopee! dinner and then we're doing a dinner, uh, that night afterwards as well there. So oh, cool. we'll be, we're providing a, a dinner that night. So that'll be fun. Uh, so Friday, Friday is going to be great. And I think even too, like I saw David Stanley is working on uh, doing a uh, Shabbat. Um, yes. Which I'm really excited about. I, I didn't get to participate in that when they did that in, uh, in Washington, DC, but um, mm -hmm. I'm definitely looking forward to doing it uh, here in Cincinnati. There's a lot of Jewish history here in Cincinnati too, but so it's exciting that we're going to, we're going to have that available for, uh, for our Jewish friends that are going to be uh, coming. And for those of us who aren't Jewish, we get to learn something new. So I'm always, I'm all about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's always nice to experience new things like that. 
but yeah, so that's, that's pretty much day one of, um, uh, of, of programming for the convention and, uh, I'm excited for it. And I think even too, like there'll be beer shares going on. Like we're gonna do some bottle share stuff. Uh, there's a hospitality room where we'll have coffee, um, Sam Adams beer. Yeah. I think we're going to have athletic brewing beers there as well. Are they going to come in? Cool. Cool. Yeah. I think Matt is bringing some stuff. So we'll Matt's have that as well. Yeah. Yep. So we'll have, we'll definitely have uh, just a lot of like awesome free stuff there with that. Um, mm-hmm. The coffee is local. It's amazing. It's from just down the way. Um, yeah. You know, and then there's groups of guys doing things like uh cigar lounge, which mm-hmm. I'm super excited about. Uh, me too. Oh, yeah. Too. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So cigar lounge and just uh, Actually, going, going down to up, other places. Uh, local cigar shops tonight because I don't have any, I mean, I have enough cigars to make it to home dad con, but I won't have any, I won't have any to share. Yeah. So the first thing I did today, I'm like, okay, where's the hotel? All right. <laughs> 20 minute walk North across this bridge, which is closed. I don't know, but I'm going to be trying to figure it out, but there's like two really <laughs> nice places. Well, one really nice place and one place that's a little closer and it'll depend on, you know what i'm looking to get but uh you should I be able to jump you should be able to jump on a tank though and just go over to newport mm-hmm. and go to uh the party source and they've got a huge humidor really the party source yeah hmm. it's the largest liquor store in the nation hmm. they've got a Maybe. huge they've got I'll a go. huge they've got a huge walk-in humidor it's awesome do they have a smoking lounge they don't not there oh, see i'm gonna have to look up the place i was just looking at because they do oh well there you Actually, go it's really funny because it, someone asked on their Google, you know, hey, do they, do they have a smoking lounge? And they're like, no, but we have an area with nice comfy chairs you could lounge in and smoke cigars. And I'm like, I don't know what you guys think a lounge is, but for me, that's what a lounge is. Can I just sit here and smoke a cigar? <laughs> yeah. There comfy chairs. If we put a movie on even, that's like, yeah, top yeah. dollar. I top wish they would do that back in the back part of that. That would be nice because there's a place called Braxton Labs, which is like a brewery that's back there, which would have been perfect for putting the putting the humidor and the, the lounge back mm-hmm. there but that would I'm, mean they have to kick them out <laughs> i'm looking at strauss tobacconist that's strauss. where i'm gonna go is that in covington um sure okay so you know where the hotel is yep and then across the river there's like a suspension bridge john a roebling suspension yeah bridge. the roebling yep okay you walk across that and just take a little right and it's right there beside the great american ballpark I don't even know what that is. Yeah, me either, man. I definitely don't know. You get here's to send me the send me the link for that because I've not heard nah, about that. That's nah, new nah, to me. You have to find it yourself, man. Oh, <laughs> Ruth's Chris Steakhouse right there too. Cigar. There is steak. a Ruth. Yes, there Whoa. is Ruth Chris. Yep. Mm. Christian yeah, Moore, Christian Moreland Logger House is right there too. Oh, oh man. I don't think we have enough time, dude. I think we have to come in on Sunday. <laughs> just just, just a, one day for steak. You know, steak and beer. Yep. Is, is, is beer good with steak? Uh, always. Okay. All right. I mean, more like, uh, I mean, like beer is always good is one thing, but steak and beer go really well together. Is that a, I mean, I've had my fair share of, of steak and beer. So it's that, sweet, all right. it's that, you know, you get that saltiness with the beer. Perfect. Mm-hmm. It's all good. Well, Any we excuse? won't, we won't, we won't go too far, too far down that rabbit trail, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah man, man, I, I I would say that uh, you know when this when this airs, we we will be about a week away. <laughs> I'm gonna die, man! And, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna lose so, my mind. <laughs> I know, I know. So I yeah, mute my mic and scream for a second. We we will be very very close uh, when this when this yeah, airs. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's, yeah. And it's just so crazy. So uh, looking forward to seeing everybody that's coming. If you're not coming totally like we love you guys we hope you stay safe uh yes. i hope that you honestly like take advantage of being a member and getting in and at least getting to see some of the content that's in there um and some of the things that you will have access to and just being able to support the uh the organization for the next year so um but yeah thanks for uh, listening and uh, we'll talk to you again next week yeah good night everybody i'm a dad that's what i do